Hello everyone. On June the 13th, there will be two sex ties, actually multiple sex ties, that are at the uh, degrees which are the most star-studied degrees of the zodiac, which is Gemini 21 to 24 degrees. And uh, there are a number of multiple uh, finger of fates as well. So let's take a look at the London chart as usual. Uh, this comes two days before the um, so-called peace talks uh, are commencing in the era. And these peace talks are, of course, without uh, Russia. And yes, you can have, definitely can have peace talks without one of the participants. This is how they simply robbed us blind after the First World War and dissected our country and took two thirds of Hungary, of the Hungarian kingdom. So yes, you can do that. Uh, the, the, the powers that be, the big, um, the big um, players can do whatever they damn well, please. So uh, the, uh, the Sun Chiron uh, sextile, which is the main participant of this uh, uh, energy pattern, is going to be exact on June 13th at 7.24 a.m. in London time. And there's also a Venus Aries and a number of others. So you, you will see that there are, three, uh, there are two big traffic jams here, one in Aries and the other one in Gemini. In the London chart, Ky uh, um, Cancer is rising with Vesta, the focusing principle, focus on yourself and your family and your home. And the Sun, Mercury, Venus uh, conjunction, triple conjunction is on the uh, cusp of health. Uh, so um, things are going to be hidden, things are not going to be shown. Uh, things are going, there will be hidden agendas. This is what we could say. On the midheaven, you have the Neptune dark moon laid conjunction. The Neptune is still at the very, very end of its own sign, Pisces, whereas dark moon laid, the acceptance of the cursed, is already at zero degrees Aries, the most prominent uh, uh, placement possible. Uh, on the um, uh, on the uh, the IC, you have dark moon in it. So that's again, that's black moon. It. Sorry, I'm very, very tired. I apologize if I make lots of mistakes. Uh, today is uh, the 9th uh, uh, of June when I'm recording this. And a day earlier, we had the exam at Clearbrook College. There were a number of people who took the uh, exam. It was a very beautiful day, but very tiring. And I'm very, very proud of my students. And the next day, or today, on the 9th, I gave a, a seminar workshop on the, tr the three um, moon phases, uh, sidereal, synodic, and declinational moon phase uh, in the forecasting. So I'm a bit tired, to say the least. So I apologize if I, I bub I'm bubbling and mumbling. So anyhow, Black Moon Lead on the, or is on the IC. Black Moon Lead uh, which means uh, clairvoyance and the ability to go to somewhere and, and clear the things and act upon what is necessary, what has to be done. And as you can see, we have two uh, triple conjunctions, one in Aries, which is Chiron, uh, Hygieia and um, Aries, Chiron, Karmic Wounds, uh, Hygieia, putting things in order, sacred spaces, uh, and Aries drastically altered outward circumstances. And in Gemini, we have Mercury in its own sign, the Sun and Venus. The Sun in Venus is the flirter, uh, the flirting energy. And, uh, 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 and uh, Venus is the flirter. And the Sun is a very clever and, and, and uh, nice person who is always joking and something like that. And if you take a look at uh, the things in Aries. Mars in Taurus is ruling uh, the uh, uh, acceptance of the curse. Uh, the North Node, which means that this is what we need to, to learn. We need to act upon what we want and we need to uh, uh, learn self-assertion and exercise our will. It also rules Chiron, karmic wounds, which are linked to fire, blood, uh, war, violence, and aggression. It also was Hygieia, putting things in order, and Aries drastically altered out of circumstances. On the other hand, Mars is ruled by Venus in Gemini. So the war is ruled by money. 
and Venus is ruled by Mercury, which is in its own sign, so you can't actually go further. And Mercury is the uh, the crux of the matter, exactly, exactly on the the uh, the cusp of the of uh, uh, the twelfth house, secret talks. So let's hope that something is coming out of this, something good, something uh, beneficial. There is this multiple finger of fate. I should have said here simply. This is a boomerang, but for some reason I decided to take this apart and look at the finger of fate first, actually, which is a multiple finger of fate. And also then uh, I uh, rather looked at the angel week portion of this. And I'm going to tell you why. Sun, Mercury, so one of the finger of fate is Sun, Mercury, Pallas Athena, and Chiron. And the other uh, figure of fate is Venus, Aries Hygieia, and Pallas Athena. And uh, in this way, you can take a look at where the uh, the energy flows. It flows towards both uh, Pallas Athena and Uranus, which are in opposition. Uranus is change, of course, and Pallas Athena, which is actually separating from the opposition, is retrograde and in a, a, a voted sign. What's the problem with it? Plus Athena is very cerebral, okay? Uh, it belongs to basically the air signs and also the, uh, to some extent, to the uh, uh, fire signs, definitely not water. So a retrograde Plus Athena in water means that you need to be wise, but you don't know how to, and you are surrounded by toxic emotions. That's going to be uh, the... the the crux, crux of the uh, the um, um, peace talks and the, the upcoming days, of course. And at the same time, uh, you can actually separate uh, the energies and you could say that uh, Sun, uh, Sun Chiron is about healing. Uh, Sun Hygieia is about putting things in order. Sun Aries is about looking at uh, drastically altered outward circumstances consciously in a conscious way. Mercury Chiron is healing wounds through words and also link, uh, 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 wounds linked to, to children. Mercury Hygieia means put things in order verbally. And Mercury uh, Aries means let's talk about drastically altered outward circumstances. And then Venus, Venus Chiron is uh, love hurts and love needs to be um, a healing property. Love, love has to have healing properties, but of course, Venus is also money. And in this case, if you take, if you learn, if you know how to learn from history, and you take a look at history, the first world war and the second world war, we have the same energy now. We have the exact same uh, players. And by the way, just for you to know, I'm not for Russians. If Russians are orcs, believe me, we Hungarians know that. But at the same time, the rest won the Second World War because the Russians, the Soviets, fought with them. And there were a million soldiers who died in this war. So 70 years later, to make them out as the main arch enemy is really ridiculous, coming this from the from the West. Anyhow, this was just a side. So anyhow, uh, so then Venus hygiene means uh, putting things in order, and Venus Aries means um, money is what is actually drastically altering uh, the situation outward in the outside world. So that those are the fingers of fate, and at the apex of which is Pallas Athena. And on the other side, the anchor point would be uh, Uranus, which is ruled by Venus, which is ruled by Mer Mercury. So again, again, we get back to Mercury in Gemini, which is let's talk, let's really, really talk about what is happening. And the angel wing again is Venus, Aries, and Uranus. So Uranus is at the tip of the angel wing, uh, creating the potential, uh, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, I, I really, I am praying for peace in in, uh, in 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 many, many ways. Anyhow, so let's take a look at the asteroids and centaurs, TNOs. And the reason why we are looking at it separately, if you know my videos, I usually do the transcendental objects and we look at centaurs, TNOs, asteroids, and fixed stars in one bundle. In this case, because the fixed stars are so abundant and so brilliant and so important, we're going to look at them separately. 
And you need to know that I, I color code these transcendental objects. Um, fixed stars are always red. We will take a look at them in a second. Uh, centaurs are, and TNOs, which de uh, describe karmic wounds, are blue. And asteroids are magenta or purple. They describe our personal karmic levels, and the blue ones describe our karmic wounds. So let's take a look at these first. And on, on the sun, you have Ramses, the um, dynasty creating pharaoh, Egyptian pharaoh, and Minerva, wisdom. Very interesting, if you take a look at this chart, you have Pallas Athena, wisdom. This is a main asteroid out of the main four. You have Athena on, on uh, Venus, which is a minor asteroid, but the same archetype. And Minerva is uh, the uh, Roman version of Athena. So you have three wise women in this chart. Hopefully, wisdom will prevail and wisdom will, won, will win. On Mercury, the communication, you have Apophis. This is the uh, snake that swallowed the sun, complete destruction. And Gunkhamdima, which is a uh, which is a Zulu, I think it's she's a Zulu heroine who is saving her tribe from destruction. So it's quite interesting. The two, one is destruction and the other one is saving from destruction. On Venus, as, as I said, you have Athena. On Uranus, you have Seneca, the cynical uh, 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 philosopher, and Lempo, who is um, a Finnish uh, uh, creator god. I talked about it a couple of times already, and uh, he was turned into a demon and a black horrible figure in Christian times. And uh, Lampo describes the process that whenever there comes a new era, a new idea, ideology, then the previous ones are destroyed or demonized or blackened. And this is exactly what's happening. If you consider that 20 years ago, uh, if you had a bad word about Israel or Israeli Polit politics, you were turned into an anti anti-Semitic. I, I, it happened to me many, many times. And now look at what's happening in the in the in the United States or in 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 England, and and look at those pro-Palestine uh, uh, rallies and 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 uh, uh, protests. It's very interesting. It's really interesting how uh, previous things are being demonized couple of it's like two two decades later it's really interesting and on Pallas Athena you have Tristan you we have a hero a, a, a knight in shining armor is them now here are the big stars and as I as I said this Gemini 21 to 23 degrees 24 degrees is extremely prominent because there are a number of very bright and prominent stars let's take a look on the sun you have Capella which is uh, Alpha Auriga, which is the third healing word for, for suicide victims, Elnat, which is uh, a Beta to uh, Taurus, the Beta star of uh, the Celestial Bull. And Beta stars are always the shadow energies of that particular constellation. And the shadow energy for Taurus, which is the Bull, which is uh, creation uh, on the physical level, creating uh, harmony and and uh, physical substances and love and money and whatever this is the uh, the, the shadow side this is what uh, comes uh, from this particular star Ensis is m42 orion which is the orion nebula which is uh, euphemistically called the sword of orion but of course a sword is a phallic symbol and if you take a look uh, at pictures, the drawings, how uh, the celestial uh, hunter is described, you will see what it is. And quite interestingly, because the, there are two of these, one is Ensis, which is the uh, Orion nebula, nebula, and the other one is Capulus, which is the sword of of uh, Persis, another another um, uh, so-called, uh, how do you call that? Sorry, I'm so tired. Uh, nebula, yes. So there's another nebula, which is a cluster of stars, really. And uh, both are linked to the masculine, to the fighting masculine, to swords and aggression. And this is how you have this. So this is a, Capulus is a very masculine uh, word. It is a masculine uh, 
mystery school. I, this this may be a good label. It's very very close to to Algo, which is a feminine mystery school. So you have the the feminine counterpart, like one and a half degrees further. But Uranus is at the at at the moment in, 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 at Capulus. Or Mercury have a Bellatrix. Now Bellatrix is the Gamma star of Orion. Uh, here the pair is. Um, Betelgeuse, which is the Alpha Star, which is the uh, eastern star, eastern shoulder of the celestial hunter, and Bellatrix is the western shoulder. And in this case, uh, this particular star is the shadow, because actually Bellatrix is uh, manifesting success through the shadow. What does it mean for the peace hopes? Well, Mercury is there, which means that talks are going underneath the table, just like the 12th house Sun, Mercury, Venus uh, show the same uh, image. On Venus, you have Alnita, which is one of the bad stars, actually the Eastern bad star of the three, uh, creating divine balance. And now Heka, which is Alpha uh, Zeta, Zeta Corvus, and the whole constellation Corvus, the Raven, uh, is linked to magic, not just white magic, all kinds of magic. And on uh, Mars, we have two stars from, uh, actually Mars is in Taurus, but uh, the two stars it is now aligned with is Sheraton, which is Beta Aries, and, and uh, Mesharten, which is Gamma Aries. So you have, again, the shadow energy of the fighting spirit, and, and Mesharten, which is quite close. Uh, Mesharten is uh, the so-called um, new era star, uh, signifying a new era. And these are Mars. So maybe the fights are entering a new era. Let's hope that this is going to happen. So those are the fixed stars of the this space time moment. And um, they will be there for quite a while uh, for uh, Uranus, not so much for Mercury, Venus, and, and uh, the Sun, because they are going to be there for one more day, one and a half more day, and for Mars for two, three days. And then they will be separating. And there's another thing, an almost perfect uh, Mer Merkama, a six-pointed star, but it is first of all non-closing. Uh, it doesn't close here. Uh, the sextile between Vesta and uh, Sedna are too wide. Is too wide. And at the same time, um, it is also anoretic because a couple of things, for instance, Neptune. Uh, asteroid Lilith uh, are anoretic and also partly out of sign, dissociate. As you can see, dissociate means out of sign and anoretic means at the very, very last degree of the sign. Uh, so let's take a look what it is. As I said, Neptune is at Pisces, very at the very end of Pisces, but Dark Mole, the curse, the acceptance of the curse is already in Aries, the most prominent position, Aries zero degrees. Certainly at zero degrees. Uh, Gemini, Vesta is at the very, very end of Cancer, focused on your family and yourself. Uh, Black Moon Lilith is at, the, is at the very end of Virgo. Put things in order, be strong, know what to do, uh, have clairvoyance and do what is necessary. Lil Lilith, uh, Asteroid Lilith, the uh, revolt against injustice is has re been retrograding back into Scorpio. Uh, toxic emotions, very deep and toxic emotions. And Pluto is at the very beginning of uh, Aquarius, suggesting that um, this is a um, position where it is aligned with uh, with, with Altair, the um, uh, Alpha star of, of uh, the celestial eagle. So uh, it is a shaman star. And Quite interestingly, I didn't have the time or the energy or uh, to to create you to you new drawings, but I'm ju just going to show you that not not only these stars are prominent that I showed you. I could have said that yeah, Pluto is on Altair, Alpha, um, uh, the Alpha star of of the celestial eagle, shooting up into the heavens into towards the Milky Way. Sedna is on. The Pleiades, the home of the creator goddess. The moon and, and Juno are, the moon or Juno conjunction actually, are is on uh, Zosma, which is uh, the uh, back of the celestial lion. It is the point where Hercules breaks 
the uh, the spine of uh, the Neman lion and conquers it. And uh, uh, and uh, Neptune is on Sheat, which is uh, be, uh, uh, beta, um, uh, not Pegasus, beta Pegasus, yes, which is on, which is one of the healing, but which is the most important healing bird for suicide victims. So as you can see. The 13th of June is really prominent because you have, a, you have a number of very, very prominent stars. But so many, I haven't seen so many stars. And stars are higher dimensional birds, which can actually down, which are, you, you can actually download the energy from there through, especially through the sun, but any other uh, celestial object is able to bring it down to the physical level, to our level, uh, the divine energies of the, those big stars. And the 13th is very, very prominent with this. And some of the fixed stars will still stay prominent for the next couple of days. So utilize it wisely and bravely. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. I'm unable to switch it down. I'm so tired.